Hello everyone, this is Nathan again, aka Ubic Videos, bringing you the second video in this tutorial series. Today we're going to start by launching the client or the node in testnet mode. That way we can easily CPU mine some coins. We are going to create an account, uh, set up a coinbase, or set our coinbase, retrieve our balance, and then send a transaction. So let's dig in. Just like last time, we're going to be in the downloads directory, and what we want to start off by doing is, I showed you this in the first video, hold down the shift key, right click, sorry, hold down the shift key, right click, open command window here, and this will prefill our working directory, which is what we want, makes things a little bit easier. Start typing Ubic, and then hit tab, and it'll autocomplete, and this is where things get a little bit different. Uh, Julian, one of the developers of Ubic, recently added the testnet genesis block to the code. So now when you fire off the client with this testnet flag, you'll be on the official uh, Ubic testnet. So you can mine test coins and test out transactions, test out contracts, stuff like that. So it's going to help us to do this without using real funds. Uh, uh, and potentially losing money if we mess mess something up. So once you get this, uh, you want to type the name of the client uh, and then hyphen hyphen testnet, and then hit enter. And you'll see that the startup procedure looks very similar to when you run the mainnet. I will point out one thing though: the chain ID will actually be different. You'll notice that this chain ID is nine. The chain ID of 9 means that you're on the Ubic testnet. The chain ID of 8 means that you're on the Ubic mainnet. So just like the last time, our IPC endpoint has opened up. So we're going to fire up another command prompt. We're going to start typing Ubic, hit tab, space, and then we're going to attach to that console or to that IPC endpoint. So the first thing we need to do, or the first thing I need to do, is uh, set up an account because I don't have an account on here yet, or I don't think I do. Personal dot list accounts. Uh, oh, not a function. My mistake. Yep. See, it returned empty braces. Uh, so there, there is no account currently. So what I'm going to do is type personal dot new. And what you can do here is when you start typing, uh, it works just like when you're in the directory you can hit tab and it'll autocomplete for you. Um, if there's more than one option and you hit double tab, you can see a list of all of the possible outputs. Uh, once I type N though, that's the only command that starts with N so it knows to uh, autocomplete new account. So personal.new account, I will point out that this function will accept a password in this field or in, this, uh, in these parentheses here, but I do not recommend doing it that's more of a security thing than anything. Uh, I, I don't really ever like seeing a password in plain text, especially on a command prompt. Um, that's a little bit more due to Linux, but we'll get into that a different day. Um, in this case, I do have my password in this file. Or I thought I did. What happened to it? So what you want to do is type it with the empty parentheses and then hit enter and it's going to ask for a passphrase. Type your passphrase, repeat it so it can double check that you're typing the same one again, and then it'll spit out the account or the address. So now what you need to do is, now that you've got your first account, you need to set your Coinbase. So this is kind of a long command. Uh, I will paste it in the description of the video, but it is web3.miner dot set etherbase and again you should be able to autocomplete these oh, I guess not for this one uh, parenthesis web3 dot eth dot accounts and then what this last part means here the square brackets with the zero in it uh, this is an indexing mechanism so we're getting, basically we're getting the first account in the list of accounts by choosing zero. Uh, indexes start with zero in most programming languages. So this is JavaScript, indexes start with zero. This account is technically in a list and it is the first, uh, first account in that list. So we use index zero to get to it. 
So we're telling uh, the cl the node that we are setting our ether base to our primary account or our first account that we created. And when we hit enter, oh, bullshit, it's not a function. Oh, it helps if you spell it right. There we go. So it tells us true. Uh, all that means is that it did what it was supposed to. We would have gotten an error like we did above uh, if I had done something wrong. So now that we've got our uh, Coinbase account set up, uh, you'll notice that I actually started the miner and I'm letting it generate the DAG file. Uh, it does take it a little, while, a little while to do that the first time, so I'm going to pause the video for now and then I'll come back when that DAG file is finished being built. Okay guys, we are back. Uh, you'll see over here in the left command prompt that it says done generating DAG for epoch 0 and that is the epoch that we're on. So I, I already stopped the miner so I can show you guys uh, how this is going to work. So the command to start it is very simple miner dot start and then you can put an option in here which I usually recommend doing especially with with what we're trying to do here. Uh, the option or the argument that this function takes is just a number and that number is the number of CPUs that it's going to mine with. So if you have like a, like let's say you have a six core processor, if you put two in here, it's gonna use two cores of your processor and leave the other four alone. So you kinda of want to usually use a number that isn't uh, the same as the number of cores and if you just leave the parentheses empty like this, it will be, uh, it'll take the entire CPU and pretty much peg it at 100% usage the entire time it's mining. Now again, this is just CPU mining, so there's really no point in doing this kind of thing on the mainnet. This only really works uh, on the testnet. On the mainnet, you're not really going to get any coins using this method. So, miner.start, I'm going to put one in because we're on the testnet again. It's not going to take very much hashing power for us to get some blocks solved. And then hit enter. You'll see it hit, It uh, gives us a true just like it did before when we created our account and set our coin base. And now we see over here that we have started mining with one CPU out of two and that we've committed work on this block. Uh, hold on one second. Let me make sure block number. Ah, we're on block zero. So I think I think my node can't connect to my other node yet. So it looks like I'm kind of starting my own test net, but it doesn't really matter because for this demonstration, it will still work just as well. So let's give it a little bit here. We need to let it mine uh, a few blocks to get to a point where the first blocks that we mined have confirmed. So again, I'm going to pause the video and we will come back when we have some blocks. Okay guys, I'm back. So we've got some coins now and let's move on with the tutorial. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to get your balance. And once again, this is kind of a lengthy command, so you might want to copy it out of the description of the video. Um, or I'd recommend typing these out because eventually you'll get a little bit more familiar with them and you'll just have them memorized. So we are currently on block nine of the testnet. Uh, again, this testnet is not the real testnet because I'm actually not connecting to it with this VM, but doesn't matter. So let's check our balance. So let's start typing web three dot from way paren eth dot get balance another paren and then eth dot coinbase which is the account that we mined them to closing paren comma and then ether in quotes with another closing paren and let me explain this command to you guys so the first section of this is we are calling a function called from way uh, what this does is it converts a, uh, a it converts a number from its current format to whichever format we specify here, which uh, we're telling it to convert from way to ether. The get balance function that's in here that we have using our Coinbase account, this will always return 
uh, your balance in way, and it's not very useful for the human eye because it's just got so many extra zeros. So we use the from way uh, conversion to give us a nice pretty balance like this. And I've currently got 88 coins in here. And if I go, uh, that's another trick. If you hit the up arrow, you can get to your previous command. So let me go block number. Yep, so we've mined 11 blocks and there's eight, eight coins per block. So that's why we have 88. And if we wait until this goes up to 12, which maybe we'll get lucky and it'll do it here real quick before I finish this sentence. But nope, it's decided that it's not gonna cooperate and it's gonna take a long time. Okay, so anyway, the important thing is we've got balance, we've got 88, so we can do the next part. Uh, for this next part, I need to create a new account, but you don't need to worry about this if you don't want to. You probably have somewhere else that you can send. So personal new account and that and then let's give it a password like so and so now I've got a new account and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a little trick uh, you can use variables inside of the ubic console so I'm gonna go my address equals and then I'm just gonna copy I'll try to doesn't want to let me copy this piece out Come on. Okay, I'm gonna do it the other way then, since it's being a pain in the butt. So my address equals to eth.coinbase, or I'm sorry, eth.accounts. And then remember how I said they were all part of a list? Well, now I've created a second account, so it's in part, it's in uh, index one. Since indexes started at zero, it's in index one. And boom. So now my address, the variable, contains our address. So this is gonna come in handy when we go to do the send. So now this is the send transaction function. Again, it's quite long, so you might wanna copy it out of the description. Uh, eth.send transaction, opening parenthesis, opening curly bracket, and from, so this is where we're sending from, eth.coinbase is where I want to send from, that's where I mined everything at, to my address value, and then again it's easiest to do a conversion to way one comma ether. And now we close everything up, closing paren, closing curly bracket, closing paren. And I will once again explain this. Let me make it a little bigger so we can see the whole, the whole command all at once. Uh, maybe it's not gonna let me do that. Oh, Windows command prompts, you suck. All right, so eth.send transaction. From is obviously the from address. To is obviously the to address. And then in value, we use another uh, another conversion function to just allow it uh, allow us to type the value easier, so we don't have to type the value in way. So this is all we need, and now we can hit enter. I must have missed a parenthesis or something. Let's cancel out of that, and let me type that again. One second. Eat that send transaction. I'm gonna open and close stuff as I go here. So we got that and that, and then we do from eat that coin base to my address value web dot two way open and close and one comma space ether in quotes. Web is not defined. I forgot the three. Web three to way. All right, and this is what you should get when you type the command correctly. Account is locked. So once you get to that point, you know that your command should be good uh, because it's actually trying to access the account to send the funds. So there's an additional step we need to take personal dot unlock account and again, this will take your password directly, but I do not recommend doing it. I recommend feeding it the empty arguments, hitting enter. Oh, uh, my bad. Uh, let me cancel that. 
Uh, it does ha it does require one argument, and that's the account to unlock. So let me do that, and then eth.coinbase. Since we're sending from the Coinbase account, uh, that's the one that we want to unlock. Hit enter. Asks for the passphrase. Type it. Boom. If you get true, that means you typed your password correctly, and the account is now unlocked. So if we hit the up arrow, uh, once again, we will have our saved command here. Uh, with the exact same parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now we've got a transaction ID. And you'll also see that in our node output, the uh, transaction ID came up here. And now if I go up a couple more to right here, let me change this to eth.accounts one so we're getting the balance of that second account that I made instead of the coinbase account and it shows zero right now uh, all we need to do we just need to wait for a couple of blocks for it to confirm and then it will show up a balance here uh, so that concludes this tutorial I know this one was a little bit longer uh, I'm gonna try to keep them a little bit shorter in the future uh, the other thing that you might notice is my audio quality probably improved quite a bit there about halfway through the video uh, I, I busted out my good microphone since the uh, the headphone microphone was picking up all of my saliva noises, which uh, is probably more information than you needed to know, but it was probably irritating you as much as it was irritating me. So in the next video, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to cover exactly yet. I'm still kind of throwing get together a list of ideas, uh, but hopefully this one helped you guys out. The testnet flag is a really useful flag for testing stuff out because you can get basically coins that you know, free coins, essentially. Uh, and there we go. I blathered on long enough that I ran the balance command again, and we can see that it got the one ETH or the one Ubic that I sent. Uh, so there you go, guys. Again, uh, as always, if you've got questions, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter or in Ubic Slack, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Take care, guys.